Welcome options traders and a special welcome to all of the new traders in the group here. We've got quite a few who have joined in. We want to welcome you to the group. And I wanted to talk a little bit about a specific strategy called a collar. And it's very common for, especially for new traders, because it allows you to, against shares of stock that you already own, perhaps sell an option and get some cash into the account. And then you can take that cash and actually buy an insurance policy to guard that downside potential risk that we sometimes see in the markets. And that's called a collar strategy. Now, like all option strategies, there's a lot of different ways we can structure them. And one is called a zero cost collar, because like the name implies, you're not going to spend money for it. And a lot of times new traders think, what else could be better? It's no cost. That's the one that I want to use. And they don't realize there is always a cost or a trade-off with every single decision you make in options. So what is the cost of a zero cost collar? Well, let's take a look. So just remember that the collar strategy means that you're going to buy shares of stock, 100 shares, you're going to sell a call, and then you will take the cash from that sale and buy a put. That's your insurance policy I was just talking about. Most of the time, your options are going to be out of the money, but they do not have to be. There are certainly times that you'll want to sell an in-the-money call or buy an in-the-money put. But again, most of the time, people will be using out-of-the-money options. So what is a zero-cost caller? Well, this is always created when the call and put prices are the same. Not real hard to do. Just look for a given expiration date and go down your broker's platform until you find a call and put price that are the same. Do they have to be exactly the same? Not really, but within a few pennies, we would still call that a zero cost caller. And the idea here is that the sale of the call completely finances the cost of the put. Or in other words, there's no cost to sell the call and buy the put. So here's an example. Let's say the stock is trading at 102.50 and we have a 105 call trading for 350 and a $100 put also trading for 350. Now this is going to be a very common scenario when your strikes are equally distant from the stock price. So notice that I've got the 105 call is $2.50 away and the $100 put is $2.50 away. So those prices, unless there are SKUs, should be trading for the same amounts. So if I sell the call and buy the put, I can do that for no cost. And if I do that, my maximum gain is 250 and my maximum loss is 250. Now, how do you figure this out? Well, there's a number of ways, but probably the easiest is to just forget about the options for a moment, at least for the costs. Recognize that you paid 102.50 for the stock. If you paid 102.50 and you have to sell for 105, this would be your maximum upside, that's $2.50. And now we have to either add or subtract the cost, which there was no cost. So 250 is the upside. The downside, What's that going to be? Well, if I paid 102.50 for the shares and I can sell them for 100, that's a 250 loss. And again, I've got no additional costs or credits coming in, so it's just a 250 loss. So that's where we're coming up with this max gain and max loss of 250. And if you do that structure right there, this is going to be your resulting profit and loss diagram. You're going to have a maximum loss down here of 250, max gain up here of 250. But notice you have limited risk and reward. The graph flattens out beyond these strike prices here. That's always going to be the same for the collar. Now we can shift this blue curve up and down depending on the prices that we use. But the basic shape will always stay the same. So this is a very typical zero cost collar. And that usually means your max gains and losses will be the same. Well, what happens if we spend money for the collar? Does that mean it's worse? Well, here's a debit collar. And the only way you end up with a debit collar is that your call price is less than the put price. And there's a few ways we can do this. I can either sell a further out of the money call, in other words, receive less money, or I could buy a closer to an at the money put, increase that put strike, and therefore pay more money. But doing either of those, or both, is going to result in a debit. I'm going to have to pay for those two pieces in total. So here's an example. Let's say our stock again is at 102.50, but now instead of selling the 105 call, I'm going to sell the 110 call. It's $5 further out of the money, and that means now the price is $1.60, but
But notice it's not 350 like it was before. I'm receiving less. And if the $100 put, which will keep the same, costs 350, so on a net basis, I now have to spend money. So if I receive $1.60 and I spend 350 on a net basis, I can sell the call and buy the put for $1.90 debit. I have to pay for that. Now what are my max gains and losses? Well, my max gain is 560 and my max loss is 440. So how do you figure that out? Well, we use the same logic here. We've got shares at 10250. If I have to sell them at 110, in other words, we get called away, that's a gain of 750. But I have to subtract out this $1.90. So 750 minus $1.90 gives me a max gain of 560. What about the downside? Again, if I buy shares for 10250 and I sell them for 100, that's a 250 loss. But now by spending money for this collar, I have to add that back in. It's going to increase the amount of that loss. So 250 plus $1.90 gives me 440. There's a little faster way you can get to it. And what I like to show in teaching verticals classes, because synthetically this is the same thing as a vertical spread, is that your max gain and max loss have to equal the difference in strikes. So you can see here we've got a difference between 100 and 110 is $10. So a little shortcut is that once I figured out my maximum gain of 560, I would immediately know that my maximum loss is 440. So if I use this debit spread, what did I do? Did I end up becoming worse? Well, let's take a look. The curve in red was the original zero cost collar, but look at the one in blue. I've increased the amount that I can make by a long shot. And yes, I've also increased the amount that I could lose. So this is just a straight up change in risk and reward. I'm taking more risk and I've also got more potential reward. Well, what if I didn't want this? What if I wanted less downside risk and I wanted more reward than on that red curve? Well, the only way you're going to do that is to increase the debit. Again, it's a thing that most people wouldn't think to do. They want to head to the credit side or the zero cost side. So again, we've got the stock at 102.50. We sell the 110 call for $1.60. Again, not 350 like we did originally. But now I'm going to buy a 105 put and I have to spend 522, not 350 like I did before. So now I'm spending a lot more and receiving a lot less. And that means I can buy the call and sell the put for now $3.62. I've got to spend a lot of money to put on this collar. And so now my maximum gain is 388 and my max loss is $1.12. And you can step through the same steps that I showed you before to get those max gains and losses. But notice that we've got a $5 difference in our strikes and that my max gain and loss total up to $5. That's a little check you can see if you did the math right. So if we use this collar for $3.62, what happens? Well, now take a look. Now the blue curve, which is what I'm on now, has less to lose and even more to gain. And the only way I could do that is to spend money. So the thing that you have to understand is that there is always a cost or a trade-off. Don't get hung up on the words debits and credits or even zero cost. Always ask yourself, what's your goal? And what do I need to do to accomplish that goal? Sometimes it will be with debits and sometimes it will be with credits. And sometimes, yes, you might be better off with a zero cost collar. So what is the cost of a zero cost? Well, you can increase the amount you can lose, or you can decrease the amount you can gain, or both. So again, it's not necessarily money that you had to spend, but it's because you're either accepting more risk or cutting down your potential rewards. So remember that zero cost isn't necessarily a benefit. It's simply a change in risk and reward. If you'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find the link in the description below.